a pair of high-tech blades, a small handle, and a good deal of determination. It sounds simple, but anyone striving to make it in the high-stakes, high-speed sport of bobsledding needs stamina, skill, and courage. But even the experts need the best possible sled to make it to the top, or bottom. The modern sled is built around a steel frame, but there are a lot of different materials used in the construction process. The sled is made using about 150 different pieces, from the basic frame and aerodynamic shell to the runners the sled will travel on. It will be exposed to enormous stresses. It has to reach a cruising speed of around 145 kilometers an hour to be competitive. It will also have to withstand up to 5G of force as it corners, so the welds holding it together must be exceptionally strong. The runners, too, have to be perfectly milled. The slightest imperfection will cause drag and slow the sled down, so they have to be very carefully crafted. The ideal width for the modern bobsled is around 68 centimeters. Any larger and drag is increased, which again will slow the vehicle down. In a sport where milliseconds count, a winning sled has to be perfect. The engineers construct the structure for the sled to within one-tenth of a millimeter accuracy to ensure it's as fast as possible. While the structure is being built, another group of mechanics can produce the outer shell. It's made with a combination of fiberglass coated with a thick layer of polyester resin. The resin layers are built up gradually until a solid shell is completed. It's then left to dry. Once it's completely solidified, the mechanics will cut the shell down to the perfect size. Precision aerodynamics are vital to ensure the finished sled will produce the fastest possible speeds. Using a circular saw, they cut the newly fabricated outer hull to the required shape, but they're very careful to vacuum as they go. Fiberglass dust can be very dangerous if it's inhaled into the lungs. As the different pieces are completed, the basic outer shape of a competition-grade bobsled begins to emerge. But how can the engineers be sure they've got the design right? Intensive testing takes place using scale models and a wind tunnel long before any construction work even begins. This level of technology means the engineers can test new designs to see how their modifications affect performance. Tiny details such as the shape of the driver's helmet can have a big impact on the speed of the sled. The final element that is vital to a winning bobsled is the runners. The exact compounds that go into these precision blades are a closely guarded secret, but different alloys include iron, copper and phosphorus. They're attached to movable struts on the bottom of the sled using ordinary nuts and bolts. But before the riders take to the course, the runners are polished to remove any imperfections. The slightest scratch or bump will increase drag. But how does the driver steer his sled? The man at the front is in charge. Beneath the aerodynamic hull is a simple contraption made of pulleys and handles. This is the steering mechanism. It's connected directly to the front runners and pulling one side or the other turns the sled left or right. Once the whole unit is completed, the only thing that remains is to try it out. Bobsledding is a sport that depends on three main factors. First, the power and aggression of the riders. Second, the quality of the sled. 
and third, how well it's driven down the track. If all the construction, testing and training have come together, it's finally down to the riders to make their sled a medal-winning success. Still to come, Wellington boots are chopped up and worn down to ensure they'll take as much of a kicking as you can give them. And Rubbish Day isn't usually a colourful experience, but we'll show you how the makers inject some into the popular wheelie bin. <laughs> 